It is my pleasure now on this Shabbat Shuvah, this holiest of Sabbaths, to welcome to Congregation Shara Tzedek's Bima, our Shaliach from Israel, our community's emissary from Israel here to Detroit, Yiftach Leket. Born in Yerushalayim, Yiftach is a son of former Israeli emissaries who served here in the U.S. Raised in the Israeli youth movement, Yiftach spent nine years as a pilot and flight instructor in the Israeli Air Force and eight years as a high school teacher and mentor for youth at risk in Tel Aviv. A talented educator with the Masters of Philosophy, Yiftach has already elevated our community and its relationship to Israel through programming and relationships, even and especially in the face of a global pandemic. Yiftach is married to Paz and they are the parents of two children. And it is now my honor and my blessing to be able to welcome my friend and our community leader, Yiftach Leket. Shabbat Shalom. I'm extremely excited and honored speaking here in front of you today. And I am humbled to try and say any words of wisdom in front of this special community. I want to thank the leadership of Sharet Tzedek and to Rabbi Starr for inviting me to speak here in front of you on Shabbat Shuva. For some reason, without knowing much about it, with a bit of chutzpah and a slight lack of judgment, I said yes. And here I am standing in front of you. Before I begin, no sermon on this day will be complete without acknowledging what happened on this day 20 years ago. For the most, American Jewry is the one caring for the people of Israel. In this painful day, we send our deepest empathy and love, wishing us to grow together to a better future. I will say a word about myself and my role here as a community shaliach. I am 39 years old. I grew up in a very Zionist family, which I hope is watching me online at this very moment from their home in Modi'in. My parents were shlichim in Los Angeles back in the 80s, where we spent four meaningful years. I graduated high school, then was recruited to the Air Force, and for 16 years total with reserves, served as a fighter pilot. I finished my bachelor's degree in education, my master's in philosophy, and worked as an educator in a high school in Tel Aviv for almost 10 years. Me and my family, Paz, Ella, and Gilly, arrived here a year ago for a challenging adventure, not to mention in the midst of pandemic while expecting a baby and meeting the mighty Michigan winter. The title of my role here in the community is to be a living bridge between the community and Israel. Many people interpret this, that title as a role of giving answers. I rather see my role as asking good questions. Today, I chose to speak to you about the connection between tshuva, Israel, and education. Shabbat tshuva, the Shabbat of returning, is the Shabbat that falls between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur during the period known as Aseret Yemei Tshuva, the 10 days of repentance. We just read these strong lines from the book of Oshea. Shuva Israel ad Adonai Elohecha ki kashalta be'avonecha. Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God, for you have fallen because of your sin. The word shuva, return, is related to the word tshuva, repentance. Therefore, this Shabbat is also widely known as Shabbat tshuva. But there is a catch. Tshuva also means another thing in Hebrew. It means answer. And for me, this raises a big question. What is the connection between repentance and answers? I guess it seems pretty straightforward. Repenting is done in order to find answers. In other words, one needs to repent as long as he doesn't know the answer or the correct answer. And at the same time, if you know the right answer, you don't need to do anything. In many ways, our modern world embraces that sort of connection. In order to be efficient, survive, or even succeed in our society, one should know the correct answer to any given inquiry. And if you don't know the right answer, you need to fix something to learn the right answer, and then you're good again. But there's another alternative of understanding the meaning of tshuva, 
rather than finding answers. Let's observe an argument of two giants that argued about the origin of tshuva as a mitzvah. Nachmanides argued that tshuva, repentance, is a mitzvah command directly from the phrase, return, O Israel. Maimonides argued that the mitzvah of repentance is not to be found in a direct way. For him, the action of confession is the mitzvah. And the true meaning of repentance comes from the intention and sincerity that stands behind the act of confession. Or in other words, tshuva is not an action that ends by finding an answer. Tshuva for him is a way, a path, a place where questions are born rather than answers. This is where our story begins. In the past year, since I arrived to Metro Detroit, I've been observing and participating in the discourse around Israel and different, in different areas of our community. There is no doubt there is a challenge, a struggle to speak about Israel, to understand it, to feel it, to know it, to inherit it. It's a struggle within congregations, within families, within ourselves. The latest Pew study shows that 51% of 18 to 29 year old American Jews claim that they are not too or not at all connected to Israel. And 27% state that caring about Israel is not an important part of what it means to be Jewish for them. And that number is growing. How does that look like in my reality? I can honestly say that my entire shlichut has changed since the events of May this year in Israel. It was frustrating and scary to see thousands of rockets shot from Gaza towards Israel, and even more to see the violence that erupted within the Israeli society between Arabs and Jews, especially in mixed cities. During and after this period of time, I've been meeting audiences from across the community teens, educators, parents, clergy, with the nature of the reality in Israel, together with social media and the rise of anti-Semitism, it is understandable that there was a strong need for one thing, answers. Answers, as we said, are the most effective and powerful ways to deal with reality. But at the same time, answers are the fast food for a real deep understanding. They mostly come from outside and nurture our desire for stability. As educators, as a community, we are looking to find an inner answer, a tshuva that comes from within. What I truly love about being an educator is the fact that you have to confront your own words and notions. So I want to share with you my personal tshuva. Coming here to be a shaliach is a professional journey, but even more a personal one. We say in Hebrew, Lifamim tsarich litrachek kedel litkarev. Sometimes you need to get away in order to feel closer. Living here in Detroit and having the responsibility of strengthening the connection to Israel created a platform for me to reconnect to my Israeliness. I had no choice but to confront some deep questions like, what is Zionism for me today? What makes the state of Israel important to me? What challenges do I have with living in Israel? What is my role in my community? Moreover, I have been confronting questions related to my Jewish identity. I have been uh, religion in Israel, for the most, has become a dividing issue, a political force. The way you live your Jewish life is very much controlled by officials rather than being inspired by leadership. So here is my personal tshuva. Against all odds, I was offered by a well-respected rabbi to give a sermon on Shabbat tshuva. What I was actually offered is a space to ask questions, to explore, to walk a path. Back to our Israel education path. In various discussions about Israel education with community members, I've heard many of them say that for the most part, we've been teaching about Israel in a one-dimensional way, and we had a good reason to do so. We believed that having a positive emotional connection to Israel is the key. That is still true. 
The only difference today is that it's not the only key needed. People tend to think in categories, good or bad, critical thinking or positive thinking, fact or fiction, Zionism or anti-Zionism. But the art of life is the ability to find yourself in multiple categories at the same time. One can feel very Zionist and practice optimism for the future of the Jewish state while implementing critical thinking over Israel's policy. Another can have a strong commitment to a certain narrative about the Israel-Palestinian conflict while expressing empathy for the, for the feelings and the narrative of the other. What we really need today is to be bold enough to allow our younger generation to go on their own path, to grow their own relationship with Israel and be right beside them. The old school me method of plain advocacy isn't effective in a chaotic world where bites of in fragmented information are conquering our screens and minds. No presentation about the greatness of Israel or its right to defend itself grows passion and love and a relationship with it. In order for that to happen, young people need to be invited to ask themselves questions like, what is Israel for the Jewish people? Why do I care about it or not? How does my connection in Israel affect my connection to Judaism and my local community? These are questions without any defi definite specific tshuva answer. The, these are questions that lead to a way that create opportunity for a life of tshuva. In this way, we don't just read teach about Israel, we create a relationship with it. And like any other healthy relationship, sometimes we get disappointed, mad, or even frustrated. But true deep relationships grow from these feelings at least as much as they grow from feelings of passion, happiness, and joy. Saying this from an educational point of view, it's important for me not to throw the responsibility over only to our devoted educators. This is a mission for all of us. I see here families of, with three generations and imagine the conversations over Shabbat dinner. I encourage you to return Israel to the table once again. Ask about it, explore, challenge, read, feel, renew your relationship in a way that younger generations can be inspired and find themselves in it. I want to end with words by the writer Amos Oz, Zichrono Livracha. It is impossible to educate for love. Not for the love of the land, not for the love of the state, and not for the love of the landscape. Love can inspire the other. Love can be aroused, sometimes. But not with a strong hand and an outreached arm. I wish all of you a Shana Tova and Gmar Chatima Tova, and I wish us to bring back the questions to our table, return, shuva, to a personal and intimate relationship with Israel, not by filling buckets of answers, but by taking the journey of self-exploration of tshuva. Yiftach Yashikach to you for your beautiful words of Torah this morning and thank you for your incredible leadership in this community and all over. We're truly learning from you day in and day out, whether it's through our programming, through your speeches, or through so much of what you do uh, around this neighborhood. And please take back to, uh, to Israel, let them know that Congregation Shar Tzedek definitely stands with Israel. And uh, thank you for your leadership in helping to strengthen the relationship between American Jewry and Israel and between American Jews and Israeli Jews. It is holy work. And may God bless you in your efforts. Thank you so much, Yiftach.